I came to speak to you today about the great love of our Father for us, for each and every one, and of the great love whereby the Father has sent to us in these many years his servant sons, the ascended masters, to teach to us those things which should shortly come to pass. The Ascended Masters have given to us the great comfort of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Mother. They have brought to us the teaching, the great joy flame, the violet flame, so that all of those initiations and testings of our souls, which we were scheduled to face in this life, we would be prepared to meet joyfully and we would not be overcome by those conditions of our personal and planetary karma, which most certainly must be met and conquered by us, each and every one, always through the word who is Christ the Lord. And so we note that in the teachings of the Ascended Masters, they have never left out anything sufficient and necessary for us to meet every day and every demand of our life. So that when we have demands that seem overpowering or assignments or whatever is the requirement of our mission, and we feel as though this load this day is too heavy for me to carry, we can always know that truly the presence is with us. The presence has foreordained that moment and hour of our testing, that the teaching has already gone forth, the message is already there, and that in the moment of greatest burden, we must remember to call forth what has already been given. All light, all teaching, all that is necessary to meet the foe of the great Christ within you is already present before the test is given. That is the great law of the Guru Chila relationship. It is the law governing the relationship of the lamb and the lamb's wife. Your soul is the wife of the lamb. Your soul wed to God, wed to the eternal Christ by obedience to the marriage vow. The marriage vow that we take is to love, to honor, and to obey the lamb. And so all covenants in the earth must be subject to that inner vow we make to the Lamb. And because we have given that vow and that promise before the altar of God, our husband, the Lamb, is always with us to sustain, comfort, and protect us. And so, in this past week, we had the message of the great joy flame and of the multiplication of joy. And so you went forth this week, and most of you felt and told me of the very great burden of world condemnation that you felt. And you noticed how easily joy could go out the window, and yet you already had the message that when it goes out the window, you shout the great joyful noise and give your dynamic decrees. Well, this is the amalgamation of planetary condemnation. But condemnation of what? It is the condemnation of the Father by the watchers who challenged him with Lucifer in the beginning. There is a great message which the great divine director teaches concerning Lucifer and the watchers and the godless creation. It is the lesson of the carbon copy, the carbon copy being the synthetic manifestation of the multiplication of joy. God multiplies his God consciousness, his word and his seed within us. And he has bidden us to go forth and be fruitful in that consciousness to multiply and replenish the earth with light. The false hierarchy of the watchers do the same. They multiply the image of the not self, the carbon copy image. And so the blessed ascended masters have told us that even though Lucifer, that fallen one, is bound, is passed through the second death, that yet 
there are manifestations of himself in the carnal mind of every individual and until that carnal mind is overcome and put down it is as though the carbon copy of Lucifer himself were present the carbon copy is all they are able to produce whereas the living Christ multiplies the loaves and the fishes for the feeding of the multitudes theirs is a synthetic mechanical mechanization of the consciousness of evil across the planetary body and it is this weight of condemnation of mechanized error mechanization in every form in every way that we see it in the synthetic civilization that John wrote in the book of Revelation concerning calling it Babylon Babylon the anti-city as the great whore is the anti-church Babylon is the anti-city and that momentum of darkness of evil of error is multiplied by the watchers the fallen angels by mechanization it is a psychic mechanization it is a physical mechanization it is a mental mechanization of the minds of the people and it is even the invasion of the subconscious mind by mechanization by hypnosis through the mass media so the plan and the plot of the fallen ones is to make of the children of the light something approaching the robot creation to mechanize the children of God and to mechanize them to such an extent as they no longer feel they need contact with the Father they no longer know that the heart flame is the means of that contact and they no longer lean upon Almighty God to meet every need and desire in this plane so mass mechanization is the instrument of mass condemnation of the watchers of the seed of the Father present within the Christ within you the Saints of God now this momentum of mechanization can be felt as a weight upon the body a weight of oppression a weight of depression a weight of self belittlement a sense of not being worthy to walk the very face of the earth the sense of wanting to dig a hole and place oneself in the hole because one is not worthy to do anything when there is nothing in you that you have of your own self condemnation then mass condemnation cannot affix itself to a particular point of your own self criticism but if you have criticism of yourself it will be blown up into a huge balloon like a balloon at a circus or something that flies out of an airplane for festivities a huge massive copy of this criticism of yourself blown up out of all proportion and paraded before you in an astral nightmare of scenes where scene after scene is this projection of yourself in a state of sin in a state of inadequacy in a state of your shortcomings if however you have a bright image of yourself and you hold to it you nevertheless will feel simply weight weight as depression weight depressing upon the chakras of your life stream this is present today as the condemnation of the United States of America as the nation of the light bearers it is in the earth it is present and it must be exposed and we must understand what it is it is opposition to the father I want your eyes open when I am speaking to you it is condemnation of the father and the father is your mighty I am presence and the father is a person who is very close to you in heaven as our father there are many ascended masters who come representing the father to you we think of Saint Germain and El Moria as father but of, above all we think of the great divine director as their gurus as the presence of the father person who holds the blueprint for our community for the earth for every son and daughter of God and so the great divine directors message is being prepared to be released the mechanization concept itself it is a very important message of the godless creation and their monstrous 
mechanization concept, which he calls a most dangerous dogma. And in his Pearls of Wisdom, he shows how mechanization, in a very subtle form, invades the mind and the thinking and the feeling process. Even the subconscious, mechanization becomes a way of life and mechanization, which means no creativity, no independent contact with your mighty I am presence, no flow of your Christ person, that mechanization is antichrist and it is felt as condemnation, depression and discouragement over all of your projects, your service, your work, and the mission that we are about. I would like to point out to you that the great divine director has already anticipated this momentum of planetary opposition. He has called us together at the ashram of the World Mother and he has delivered the longest dictation that has ever been given on the subject of becoming his chila. If you do not have complete notes in your notebook regarding this dictation and the points that he made for chila ship, I invite you to stay after dinner and hear his dictation this afternoon so that you can review what he gave us. What he gave us was the opportunity for a very intimate and close relationship with himself. It is very evident that it, the reason that he gave us the opportunity is that we need it in order to meet new levels of planetary momentums of darkness. He did not say that in his dictation because it is time we understood that when a dictation is given, it is like the shadow that precedes coming events. The light of the Ascended Master's dictations is always telling us what will be on the road ahead, and here is the light that we must take with us in order to meet us, in, in order to meet what is coming. So the great divine director, as you know, occupies the point of the Father on the cosmic clock, the 12 o'clock uh, the 12 o'clock line. He gives us the initiations of the Father and of power. And if we would take those initiations, we must face the world momentums of criticism, condemnation, and judgment. The criticism of the United States as the nucleus of Israel and of the light bearers is present today. And so we meet it personally, we meet it as opposition to the teachings, to the organization, but we also meet it through the opposition to our government and to our defense. This week, we see the troops in Cuba barely challenged. Carter has decided to meet it with diplomacy. And Vance has said, though it is a very grave danger, we shall not meet it with ultimatums. And already voices are crying, this shall not interfere with SALT too. This morning, over the radio comes the report of the discovery of Soviet spy ships off of San Diego. One there a few days, one there a month. Spy ships. I remember well the story that was told to me, which I feel important that you know. It was told by a keeper of the flame from San Diego, and it was told to her by a friend. And that friend was riding on a bus, and there was someone from a Soviet ship, a seaman who was on shore. Don't ask me how he got there or what he was doing in San Diego, but he was on the bus. He propositioned the friend, and the woman said, I am a devotee of God and of Jesus Christ. At which point he began to cry, and he began to tell her of the enormous and horrendous plots of the Soviet Union to destroy the United States and that he was part of a Russian spy ship off of the coast of California. This was told to me several years ago. I can assure you that the United States has sufficient intelligence to be aware of a spy ship when it arrives and not a month later. I can assure you that the release of the news of these events to us is always calculated but those who calculate the release of that information for political or other reasons cannot really out-calculate the mind of God, the mind of our Heavenly Father implemented to us by the great Divine Director. The presence of the KGB and Soviet espionage within this nation is well known 
and well documented, although those who are infested by the psychic virus of world socialism and world communism that affects the very logic of the mind and the ability to see clearly, those individuals are continually attempting to cover up the lethal nature of the motives of the Soviet Union. And so it remains for us today to take up the mighty cross of our Father and the defense of the children of our Father in the exposure of the dragon, the international dragon, the money beast itself, financing this conspiracy and this cooperation between world capitalism and world communism for the defeat of the individual soul of light in a mass, monstrous mechanization concept. Our Father is greatly concerned as to the welfare of his children. And Mother Mary, the great Mother Light, who is the bride of the Holy Spirit, the archetype of the woman clothed with the sun in our midst, is forevermore the daughter of the Father. And the Father cares for the mother, her seed, her children throughout all the earth. We know that the great divine director and his legions of light, the hosts of the Lord, are present for the resolution of these conditions. We know that the majority of the American people are very much aware of the nature of the liar and the lie of the Soviet Union. Even in the little incident of the woman detained at the airport and the misrepresentation of that incident in the Soviet press. The attempt to make the American people appear to the people of Russia as though they were enemies, when in truth the enemies are the watchers themselves. This will be the decade in the 1980s of the vast exposure of the watchers and their seed. It will be an intense experience because the watchers have held dominion in every government and in every economy for thousands upon thousands of years. We see then that what is necessary is a very tight nucleus of devotees of Almighty God, those who understand that only the great divine director who occupies the point of the 12 o'clock line that is usurped by Lucifer and his watchers can sustain us in that hour when we must take our stand and openly challenge these fallen ones. Jesus tells us when he sends us to preach that which we have heard in secret, that which I have whispered in your ear, that speak openly. There is nothing hidden that shall not be revealed. It will be shouted from the housetops. And guess who is going to shout it from the housetops? <laughs> the preachers of the word called by Sanat Kumara. And Jesus Christ has said, he that will deny me before men him will I deny before my Father. He w who will bear witness of me before men, him will I witness before my Father. And so that is part of taking the mantle of the great gurus, the mantle of preaching the word. The testimony of the word must be spoken, it must be written relentlessly because it challenges whether people hear it or not. The word is like the tree that falls in the forest, and they say, did it make a sound? Whether you speak alone in the forest and make the sound of the roaring of the lion, or whether you speak it in the middle of the modern Babylons, it is heard, it registers upon the etheric plane, upon the mental plane, the emotional plane, the physical plane, and the fallen ones are judged thereby. And therefore they are threatened, whether the Lord Christ is in hiding or whether he is in public. The speaking of the word. So the great divine director is one that we look to. We huddle near. We come to his great blue causal body. We feel the presence of his light. We remain steadfast in the violet flame and the blue flame, and we make certain that we are aligned with his presence, for only by that presence and through him, the entire hierarchy of the ruby ray, will we be successful. The cork is off of the bottle. It has been pulled off of the bottle, and there is no turning back. The exposure of the seed of the wicked is happening. 
It's happening because of our dynamic decrees, because of the message of the mechanization concept. And we see it happening throughout the political arena. There is exposure. There must be much greater exposure, especially of the Soviet Union. And it is Saint Germain's desire that we shall be relentless in the exposure of the spy activities and the war intentions of the Soviet Union toward the United States before the SALT Treaty is debated and ratified. It is expected to come in October. We have then perhaps four to five weeks of intensive decrees here and in our teaching centers. These need to be given in our morning decrees, in our tags. The exposure of the nature of evil and evil intent. I want to speak to you of the virus itself. You all know of physical viruses which attack and penetrate the cell itself. There are astral viruses which attack the mental body and the astral body. And those astral viruses carry the disease of the perversion of the mind of the devil himself, the perverted insane mind. They carry the disease of insanity. World Socialism a la Karl Marx and Lenin and World Communism is a disease of the mind. And it is a disease which is carried by the watchers and their seed. And although they are not always the ones who have the disease, they are the carriers of it and it infests the minds and the astral bodies of the children of the light. This is why there are people in this country faced with all of the evidence of truth, of evil itself, and of the war plans and war machine of the Soviet Union will continue, continue, and continue to deny the reality and the threat of that war machine. Therefore, we have a most intense battle of calling for the false hierarchies of the astral viruses of world socialism and world communism, for them to be bound and removed, and for the healing of the peoples of the earth from that beast of idolatry, that virus of the idolatry of the watchers and their one world super state and their one world economy. There is no other way to understand why children of the light would support the work of the devil except by this disease. People call it brainwashing or hypnosis. It is far more than brainwashing or hypnosis, I can assure you. It is a veritable disease of the astral body and the mental body, and it is the counterpart of the physical cancer. It eats away at the individual's faculties to deal with the word of God, the word as the logos, the word as reason. So this is the opposition to the community of the Holy Spirit and to the cities of light, the chakras of the nations. In the midst of this challenge against the United States and within our government and the challengers, those who propose to run for the office of the president, I don't see them as challengers of Jimmy Carter. I see these challengers, these fallen ones, as challenging the very office of the President of the United States. I don't see Jimmy Carter as someone worth challenging by anyone. But I see that office as highly coveted because, as I've explained to you, it is a mantle of authority. And it is that mantle of authority which comes from the voice of the people, their vote and their voice, as well as from the Great White Brotherhood. And these fallen ones who are going now to try to get elected and to go before the people with their personalities. They want that mantle. They want that approval of the people to carry out their final nefarious deeds for the destruction of this nation. Therefore, we must decree for the binding and the judgment of all seed of the wicked who are challenging and assaulting the office of the President of the United States of America. We must not prejudge who they are, but we must make calls that every one of them is bound and stripped of the supporting fallen angels and laggards who would like to put them in power to have the Antichrist sit in that office come 1980. That is the determination of the fallen ones. And let us get out of the realm of personality and not root for people 
but let us root for the living Christ in the sons and daughters of God and call for the binding and the judgment of the hordes of demons and discarnates that support the candidates who represent the fallen ones. They of themselves do not have all of this magnetism, but they and what they call their charisma is nothing more than legions of sympathetic demons and discarnates who appeal to the sympathy of the people. And the people are very sympathetic to the watchers and the fallen ones. We must heal by the authority of Almighty God and the Holy Ghost our people of this astral virus that causes them to be sympathetic to the Luciferians and their philosophies. This is what is upon us. The people need the healing light of the Holy Ghost that they can be liberated from their idolatrous consciousness. Now, the gift of, of Chila ship under the great divine director. I would like to read to you a moment in the life of Jesus Christ because I perceive that many of you have felt burdened this week with condemnation, and that condemnation makes you feel as though you cannot really thrust forward with the tremendous joy of a knight or a lady championing the Christ. It makes you feel burdened about facing the world, facing the audience, facing public opinion and its condemnation. It kind of makes you want to retreat into the intimate inner circle and only work from within. And of course, we know we must go forth. And our wonderful stumping teams are going forth this fall, and they're going to make a great indentation, a great penetration by the full power of Cyclopea into this nation once again. I tell you, it takes great, great courage and great communion with our Father to go forth knowing what you will meet when you present the living word. And I would like to give everyone, especially our stumpers and two-by-two -two teams and all who go forth in the name of St. Germain, the encouragement for mission Amethyst Jewel, which comes from chapter 7 of the book of John. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. The use of the word Jews in the New Testament has divided Christians and Jews through the centuries. This ought not to be. You must understand that neither Jew nor Gentile is the enemy of Christ, but always the seed of Lucifer incarnating among them. Therefore, we see that among the leaders of the Jews, there were those who sought to kill Christ, those leaders of the Jews were not Jews, but those who embodied among them. We know that many multitudes who followed Jesus Christ were Jews, were healed and converted by him, and then they called themselves Christians. So there were many Christian Jews in those days. Let there be no division then among the people because of the Luciferians that have occupy the positions of authority, whether among the Protestants, the Jews, the Catholics, or any nation, whether it is race, nationality, or religion. Let us not allow the seed of the wicked to divide us. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go unto Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. There were brethren of Jesus. There was a family of brothers of Jesus that were born to Joseph and Mary after Jesus was born. How many, I do not know. One, at least, James, became his follower and disciple. Whether this brethren considers only the flesh and blood brethren of Jesus or others who were close to him as cousins, families, relatives, whoever they were, they were close enough in association to be called brethren, but they did not believe in him. This in itself 
should be a consolation to you, that you will understand that people closest to you in your families, in your relatives, in your communities, do not believe upon the work of the Lord God Almighty or the living Christ in you or in the ascended masters. So Jesus had his, quote, brethren to contend with, and they thought that the miracles that he did only in the presence of the inner circle of his disciples should be performed openly so that everyone could see them, including himself, because they also needed to be convinced. But they did not realize that some of these miracles were not for the public, were not for the profane, but were the gift of the Father to the believing body of disciples who were closest to him. Jesus said to them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. ready. You are always ready, but never really prepared to receive the living word or the living Christ. The world cannot hate you. Why should the world hate them? They bore no light of the Christ. They did not defend him as the person of the Christ or any who had gone before him. Why should the world hate them? The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. It has ever been so, it will never change, that when you speak openly to the world of its evil and its wickedness, the world will hate you, whether it is family or relatives or friends or nations. They will hate the light and the bearer of the light because the light exposes evil by its very presence. Your silent presence is testimony. That is why it is written, they hated me without a cause. The silent presence of the light in little innocent children often brings upon them condemnation and ridicule on the playgrounds of life. It has ever been so. It should not be received by you as a burden of condemnation that something is really wrong with you. If you are a light bearer, the weight of anti-light will be present in one form or another. But our Father has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to give the example of how he dealt with that presence in his family and in the watchers among the Jews. Our Father has sent the ascended masters right now to tell us how to deal with that energy with the violet flame. Your testimony is your presence. Your aura testifies of the word. Your aura is an affront to the forces of anti-light. Sometimes you feel you'd like to tone down that aura or crawl into a hole, as we say. But you dare not. You dare not enter into the hypocrisy of the very ones who mock that light. Turn up the light. Turn up the aura. Let it become more intense. It will hasten the entire process. And so he said to them, Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. After a certain preaching of his word and a certain bringing together of his disciples, Jesus went apart and did not make himself so available to the public for this very reason, that he knew that the condemnation and the intent, the intent to murder him, was already present. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were, in secret. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him, for some said, he is a good man. Others said, Nay, but he deceiveth the people. Howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. This is the fear of the watchers, the fallen angels of Lucifer, and that fear has always been present among our people. Beloved Sanat Kumara gives to us his ritual of the exorcism of the seed of the wicked and the watchers from the earth and he says, fear not, you are held safe and secure in the everlasting arms of God when you give this invocation with me. 
when you fulfill all requirements of chilaship, then you do not fear, as Samson did not fear, as David did not fear, as the living Christ did not fear. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. He didn't condemn, he didn't argue. He walked into the temple and he began to teach. It is the teaching itself which is ever the Father's concern for the feeding of his children. There were children in the synagogue they needed to be fed. He taught them. He did not mind the murmuring of the watchers in their midst. He taught, he witnessed, he testified, he told them, he answered the call of Sanat Kumara, tell them how great things the Lord has done unto thee and what compassion he has shown unto thee. Testify of me, witness of me, preach my gospel, teach my teaching. It is the perpetual flow of the word which is your defense. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. The watchers always consider that the only way that anyone can know anything is by the intellect and by the formal studies of the mental body. If you do not have those formal studies, then you are not considered as knowing anything. In the religious community, in the churches, among the theologians and the doctors of the law, they always attempt to show how the theology of the ascended masters is not in agreement with sacred scripture. And they can always prove it because they interpret the sacred scripture without the Holy Spirit. A dead letter cannot measure up to the living word of the Holy Ghost nor can the Holy Ghost be in agreement with a dead theology. And therefore, they take the children of the light in their brainwashing sessions, and they attempt to confound them by showing them the contradictions of ascended master teachings. But if you will study the teachings, you will see that they are internally consistent, internally consistent with the Holy Ghost. So Jesus said, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him, no misuse of the law. Righteousness is the correct use of the law, the correct use of the energy of the word. There is no unrighteousness in the one who is true to our Father. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why go ye about to kill me? The people answered and said, Thou hast a devil, who goeth about to kill thee? Jesus knew the very intensity of their condemnation, their intent to murder. They had not said a word. They had not attempted to seize him. He accused them of the evil in their hearts, and they answered him according to the letter of the carnal mind. They were innocent because they had not spoken it, but they were altogether guilty because they held in their heart the intent to murder. And he dared to challenge the presence of the vibration. And this is what the ascended masters always do, whether it be to the wicked or even among the chilas. They will challenge your vibration when your actions and your words may be without reproach. But inwardly, Jesus said, ye are ravening wolves. An impure motive, an impure heart, an evil intent, is always subject to the challenge of the great divine director. And therefore, ascended master chilas always want to get there first. We want to get there first. We want to get to the altar and be cleansed before it is necessary for God to send an angel, Archangel Michael, to challenge us and to say, 
get thee behind me, as Jesus said to Peter, to challenge that harboring within us of some form of rebellion or disobedience or stubbornness or pride that is within, although it is unexpressed. And that form of evil is always most dangerous to the soul because the karma for that evil does not return until it becomes a physical act. So Jesus said to Judas, that which thou doest, do quickly. That which thou doest, do quickly, so that the deed can become the karma, the karma can descend, the soul can repent, be forgiven, and transmute that karma. But when individuals harbor the intent to murder or the intent of hatred for years and years and years, it becomes a cancer that eats away at their souls before the manifest deed can ever return to them the judgments of God whereby they can learn of their karma and correct it. So this insidious form of harbored evil is what the ascended masters come to expose as the carnal mind wherever it is found. We must see that our motives are pure above all in the sight of God. Their motives were not pure. You must recognize and be willing to have the responsibility that any form of the carnal mind that you allow to remain in yourself has the intent to murder the Christ in you. If you give the carnal mind the room to live in your temple and in your heart by taking a little bit of rebellion and a little bit of disobedience and a little bit of this and that and saying, well, it won't hurt anyone and no one will know the difference. That portion of the carnal mind that you allow to remain becomes the open door for entities, for forces that move against the light within you. And then you wonder why you seem to fail you don't seem to get anywhere. You don't seem to really be the master of your life. Maybe you have frequent accidents, all kinds of little things that keep on crossing your path. And when the day is done, you really don't have the certain God victory to show for it that you should have. It's because somehow, somewhere, there's a little trap door that's open. And it's because you have not been willing to surrender the whole carnal mind but only those portions of it that get in your way. But the portions that you like to enjoy, you keep, you see, and then you have a house divided. The carnal mind, whether his name is Lucifer, Satan, the godless creation, or the not-self within you, is always the murderer of the Christ. Is something stopping the fullness of your Christ self from manifesting within you? Have the courage to challenge it, as Jesus did, even before it acts. Nip it in the bud at the point of that impure motive. Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receive circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Not the appearance of the Luciferians or not the appearance of the children of God will tell you the motive of the heart. Then said some of them of Jerusalem, is not this he whom they seek to kill? But lo, he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? Howbeit we know this man whence he is. But when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am, and I am not come of myself. But he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. He is speaking of the guru who sent him, of Maitreya and Gautama and Sanat Kumara and the hosts of the Lord. He is speaking of his father, whom they know not. Because they are the seed of the wicked, and that father is not their father, 
but their father is the devil. They know not the father, they know not the I am presence, and they know not the guru who stands in the office of the father. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. And many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these which this man hath done? The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am, thither ye cannot come. They could not enter into the hallowed circle of the oneness of the Father and the Son. They could not take him in the fulfillment of his crucifixion, his resurrection, and his ascension. He could not be touched. That was the secret dwelling place of God. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? They are of the princes of this world. They control the world. They knew there was no place that he would go in the world that they could not find him if they determined to find him. Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this that he said? Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. This is why we are here. This is why your angels protected your birth through your mother and your first breath and your first steps, every one of you, protected by guardian angels. Why are you here to say to the people of the whole world, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. You have not just one cup to give, but many cups. Your cups have been filled again and again and again. You do not even realize how much you know of the light until you find the beggar who knows absolutely nothing, has nothing, is starving at the gate. And you will find how much you have to give. He stood and he cried, saying, often that word is used to describe Jesus. He cried out, saying, and you can feel the momentum, the pathos of his love for this people. In the midst of all of this, you can see clusters of these watchers in the very synagogue plotting his death. And he has no concern but crying out, If any of you are thirsty, come, and I will give you to drink. He had but a few hours, days, and months left to his mission but he must feed the multitudes. We are certain that we are here today and that we have come protected. But the hour when each individual's time is come, no man knoweth save the Father. And therefore, hour by hour, we must feed the hungry. And he said, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Why, you have your own built-in reservoir of light and teachings. You press the button and you fill the cups and they keep on coming, and that reservoir of living water flowing out from you never fails, never ceases to give the teaching and the word. And he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. The Holy Ghost came to them all on Pentecost, after his ascension. The Holy Ghost was the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ himself, 
who descended to them. But look what it says. All you have to do is believe that Jesus Christ was the embodied word. And that belief, the great divine director, and Sanat Kumara teaches us, is meditation upon the person of Jesus Christ. What is the work that we must do? Believe on the one sent. Your belief is your meditation on the Christ. It is your attention. When it says all you'd have to do is believe and be saved, it means you have to keep your attention on your mighty I am presence, your Christ self, and the ascended masters. And you keep it there 24 hours a day. And when you keep it there, you are saved because the figure eight flow is sustained and that energy comes from the Father through the Christ self, sustains and nourishes your soul and returns to God. When you believe on him, you are meditating on him and therefore you have limitless supply of this river of water. Understand what believe means. Believe and be baptized is the requirement of your mission. Believe, meditate on, baptize, be immersed in the living word, be cleansed by it, washed by it, transmuted by it. Believe and be baptized. That is what the Holy Spirit says is the meaning of that equation. Belief is always works and words as the result of meditation upon God. Jesus said, he that believeth on me the works that I, shall, that I do shall he do also. If you believe, you do works and you do the greater works because he said, I go unto my Father. Believing is doing. Believing is meditating right now. Not somehow when you fully master every word that has ever been spoken by the ascended masters, but right now by the very believing of God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Mother, and the ascended masters, and their spirit with us by that meditation of your being. You have right now the living water to give to the multitudes. Stop procrastinating the moment of your attainment. The world is thirsty now. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. They know not the law, therefore they believe on this man. And these people are cursed. This is what the watchers think of the children of God. They are cursed and below even the cattle. Nicodemus saith unto them, He that came to Jesus by night, being one of them. Doth our law judge any man before it hear him and know what he doeth? They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And every man went unto his own house. And Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. Let us pray. Beloved mighty I am presence, beloved Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and all of the servant sons of God who are with you in heaven and in the earth. We come together to meditate upon thy mission 
and thy hour. O beloved Jesus, let this be the hour of thy coming, fully and bodily into the temple of each one of these thy disciples. Let this be the hour of the second advent. Let it be the hour of thy coming in full glory. Day by day, we celebrate the now of the advent. And all of the hosts of the ascended masters, as the angels of light who descend into our midst by the power of the spoken word and the certain word of prophecy. For all of this, O God, we are grateful. We consider this day with great earnestness each and every footstep of thy mission. For we know that our mission, as we take up the path of the ruby ray and bear the rose cross, that our mission must be in thy footsteps and that our mission must be in this hour an example to the great multitude who must follow in these initiations. Therefore, beloved Jesus, come unto us, teach us, by thy Holy Spirit. O entire spirit of the great white brotherhood, I summon thee in the name of the children of the light throughout the earth this day. I summon thee, enlighten thy children, thy saints, the great multitude, with thy living presence within each heart. Let us fulfill every requirement of the law and not be found wanting. Let us bring forth fruits meet for repentance, and come then, every one, to alignment with the great light of our Father and of the Blessed Son, the Blessed Holy Spirit, and the Blessed Mother. O hosts of the Lord, seal these precious hearts in the one flame of life, now and forever, and let this body of the Lord in the earth be the living body of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we might live to fulfill his mission in the earth. This is our desire, and we drink of thy cup, beloved Jesus. We drink all of it. We spurn no portion of it. We believe on thee, and we expect and we direct the living water of life as our portion to give to the multitudes. Consecrate then those who are among us who will go forth. Seal them, O Lord. Seal them with thy Holy Spirit. Seal them with that power that thou gavest unto the disciples, the power over all devils, Give them that power of the Holy Ghost to confront those possessing demons that cry out, Lord, Lord. Give them the power to rebuke them in thy name, O Lord, and to give the true teaching in the very midst of the synagogue of life. Blaze thy light, blaze thy light, blaze thy light, O Holy Spirit, by thy word, by the word of every ascended master, cosmic being, angelic presence in our midst. Let the fullness of the cup of the mission of Jesus Christ be fulfilled in us each one, day by day, in the days and months to come. This fulfill, O God, for it is the deepest desiring of our heart to be thyself in the earth, body, soul, and mind, on the cross, in the tomb, in the resurrection, and in the ascension in this life. Amen.